So here's our video to help you check your answers for the Unit 9 study guide and help you prepare for the unit test. Now we're not uh, covering any of the maps on this video. Remember we have several other videos that we've already uh, prepared for you on maps. Just scroll down on the blog there to find the map videos that you use to study for the mapping quiz. Um, but do remember that all of these political features, all these countries will be included on the test and you're also responsible for knowing the locations of all of these physical features. All right, so let's start with the uh, section on where people live and the work they do, the mountains, the deserts, and the rivers. Um, on your study guide, uh, we've broken this down into work that people do, how they travel, and do people choose to live there on purpose? Uh, in the mountains, the, the work that people do there, it's a lot of herding that's done in the mountains. As far as, uh, and also some, to some degree, there's, uh, there's, there's work in the tourist trade and Sherpas and so forth. For travel, people are driving cars, they're walking, they're using animals. Not as much uh, use of cars as, uh, as they would probably prefer because it's difficult to get around up there. It's difficult to build roads. Uh, do people choose to live there? Not many do. Not many do. Some do. Some do, but, uh, but it's, it's difficult to live in the mountains, so it's not a, a popular uh, place for people to settle. Uh, next up, the deserts. Uh, the type of work that people do there. Again, we're looking at uh, some herding. Uh, in the case of Asia, we're, uh, it's a combination of uh, horses and maybe some camels uh, and some goats. Um, but it is uh, herding if there's any work to be done in the desert. For traveling, again, this is, this is modern times. People are driving cars. Uh, they're walking. They're, using, uh, they're getting around on, on animals. People don't really choose to live in the desert, though. Um, it, it may just be a fact of their circumstances that they're living there, but you know, people don't generally desire living in the desert where it's difficult to, uh, to eke out a living. The rivers, on the other hand, there's all kinds of work that people are doing there. There's a lot of farming because that's where your um, fertile soil is going to be near the rivers. There's a lot of fishing, obviously, because there's water and fish. Uh, and there's a lot of trade in the, around the rivers because people can get uh, back and forth very easily using water for transportation. As for travel, it's all the above, um, you know, the cars, the walking, the animals. But we can also add boats uh, getting around on ships. Uh, to the rivers areas. Uh, do people choose to live there? Yeah, most definitely. This is the place where if you have a choice in the matter, you're going to want to live near the rivers because that's where you're going to have access to um, all those things that you need there. Uh, transportation, fertile soil, uh, farming, all that. Plus, uh, near the rivers is where we have um, enough resources to support full-scale cities. All right, the environmental problems, that was um, part of that big assignment that you did. Uh, we'll start with water pollution and the causes and consequences. The causes for water pollution in China, of course, primarily industrial chemicals from those factories. Uh, the water pollution in India, though, that's mainly coming from untreated sewage. Uh, there are different consequences, of course, uh, for all this water pollution. The consequences, um, well, we're looking at waterborne diseases, especially in the case of, uh, of that untreated sewage in India. Waterborne diseases that uh, can, can kill a lot of people, especially children. Um, the drinking water becomes unsafe, um, especially when we're talking about those industrial chemicals in China uh, and the heavy metals there can uh, lead to neurological damage. And you know, drinking water, access to drinking water is an important issue in different parts of the world, including Asia. Now, on to uh, air pollution, the causes of air pollution in Asia. Um, an awful lot of it caused by wood-fueled cooking fires. Um, a lot of people still cooking with wood over there. Um, factories from all the uh, modern production going on there and cars. Remember, with, the, with more prosperity, uh, more wealth, more people are driving cars and getting the car exhaust that leads to the air pollution in the Asian brown cloud. Consequences. Now you got a lot of uh, respiratory illnesses. Uh, these are breathing problems, uh, illnesses involving the lungs. Um, 
climate change uh, on a broad scale, though we're not, the people of Asia are probably not so much worried about the climate change. But uh, also remember, less food can get grown. When you've got a big cloud blocking uh, some of the sunlight, you're not able to grow as much food uh, because less uh, sunlight is getting to your plants. Flooding. Uh, the causes are different in China and India. In China, the flooding is caused by those really powerful rivers, uh, especially the, the Huanghe and the Yangtze, getting all this water down from the mountains. Uh, those rivers are very powerful. India, of course, the flooding is caused by monsoon rains. Monsoon rains there. All right, um, consequences. Well, you know, the... The flooding spreads diseases, towns get washed away, millions of people get killed by the flooding. All right, these are our quick fire questions, just a variety of miscellaneous questions from the unit that you will need to make sure you know for the test. Uh, number one, which mountain range forms a barrier that separates China from India and Pakistan? Now, there's only one mountain range we've talked about this uh, time around. That, of course, is the Himalayas. And the Himalayas uh, help to isolate these countries from each other. Um, in the case of isolating China from India, it helps to create um, separate cultures in both areas. Number two, karma is a system of cause and effect uh, in which two religions? Um, of course, uh, karma and reincarnation are parts of Hinduism and Buddhism. Number three, how is the Christian slash Muslim idea of what happens to a person's soul after death different from the Hindu and Buddhist concept? Well, remember, most Christians and Muslims believe that the soul uh, lives on into eternity in heaven or hell after you die, while Hindus and Buddhists believe that souls are reborn into new bodies. That's what they call reincarnation. Number four, which natural resource is commonly used for cooking fuel in many parts of Asia? All right, as you know, that is wood. Uh, and one of the consequences of that, of course, is uh, wood cooking fuel leads to a, a, a lot more air pollution, or Asian brown cloud as we called it, uh, in that region. Number five, name a positive consequence of flooding. Yes, there are positive consequences of flooding. And as you'll remember, floodwaters carry silt that fertilizes fields for farming. That silt um, brings nutrients to the soil. And, uh, and, of course, the water itself also helps the farming, too, when it's not flooding things. But, um, but yes, that silt is uh, very important. Uh, it uh, provides the fertility for it's fertilizing the soil there. Um, finally, on this one, number six, why do many people choose to live near rivers? Well, there's water for fishing and trade and fertile land for farming. Uh, this is all the things that people need to survive are right there near the rivers. Uh, and there's enough of those resources to support full-scale cities, uh, unlike other areas. All right, now here's uh, finally our uh, review here of some of the major aspects of the five religions. Remember, for each of these statements, we're going to put a check mark under the column that applies to um, which religion or religions uh, that statement um, applies to. So the five pillars you'll remember from our Middle East unit that applies to Islam. Islam. Nature worship in the form of spirits called Kami and also ancestor worship. Well, that falls under Shintoism. Now, this is a tricky one. It's practiced in Southwest Asia, Southeast Asia, South Asia, and across North Africa. This one is, yep, yep, there's only one, Islam. If you put more one of the others, then you're wrong. Uh, only Islam is practiced in all of those areas in, uh, in large numbers. Founded by Siddhartha Gautama. This one, of course, is Buddhism. Yes, uh, Siddhartha is that uh, Indian prince who ended up uh, becoming the Buddha. Which of these is actually not a religion? 
Confucianism. Confucianism doesn't uh, include any discussion of the afterlife or, or gods or your soul. Uh, focuses on what happens to you in this life only. Uh, this religion talks about the four noble truths. Suffering is a part of life. Suffering is caused by selfish desires. To end suffering, you must learn to let go of selfish desires and live a life of moderation. Remember that Buddhism... Buddhism is the religion that focuses on rele releasing people from suffering. All right. Sunni and Shia. Sunni and Shia, as you know, are the two major divisions of Islam. Islam. Mainly practiced in India. That one, of course, is Hinduism. Hinduism is mainly practiced in India. Founded in the 500s B.C. Actually, two of them on this one. Founded in the 500s B.C., that's both Confucianism and Buddhism. Monotheistic. Uh, the religion here that is clearly monotheistic is Islam. Islam is clearly monotheistic. Um, that's one of the most important defining factors of Islam. Uh, some people would argue that Hinduism is also monotheistic. Um, we'll leave that up to interpretation by different individuals. No gods mentioned. No gods mentioned, well... No gods are mentioned in Confucianism. Also, no gods mentioned in Buddhism. Buddhism is still a religion because they talk about a soul and your afterlife and karma and all that sort of stuff. But uh, no gods are controlling uh, the world in Buddhism. Uh, and finally, claims no founder. That applies to two of them. Both Hinduism and Shintoism, they are so old we have no idea uh, who, if any one person, uh, founded those religious faiths. Now, don't forget to watch the map videos uh, to make sure that you know your maps and uh, study well. Good luck on the test.